got a word for you tonight. If you would, just stretch your hand this way and pray that God would use me, that he I would deliver the word that he wants tonight. Lord, I thank you and I praise you for who you are. Lord, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your spirit and I thank you for your word. So, Father, I ask right now, in the next uh, few minutes, Lord, that you would, you would, through the Holy Spirit, bring the word of God. Let it go out and let it pierce our hearts and pierce our minds. Let us be forever changed. That's why we come here, Father. We come here to lift you up and to, to learn of you and to be forever changed. We thank you. We praise you. We magnify you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I've got a, the message title tonight is, Am I Being Led by the Holy Spirit? Am I Being Led by the Holy Spirit? How many knows it's important to be led by the Holy Spirit? It's crucial, isn't it? It's crucial. Uh, if you're going to have a spiritual growth, it is crucial to be led by the Holy Spirit. And uh, this next year, this next year, I want more than ever to be led by the Holy Spirit. Walk even closer, don't you? That's what I, I desire to do. I have been led by the Holy Spirit, but I want to even go to a greater level, don't you? I believe you could walk in his back pocket. I really do. And that's where I want to be. I want to be right there uh, when I hear him say something that I'm in tune with him. And uh, I believe you can do that. But I take it's going to take putting some of this aside, some of me aside, some of Tim aside, and, and more of him. May I decrease and him increase. Amen? So if you got your Bibles, turn to John 16, 5. John 16, 5. We're going to talk about the work of the Holy Spirit. And you can ask yourself, am I being led by the Holy Spirit? That's what I like to do. I like to bring messages that you can, you can ask yourself. You can self-examine. Self-examine. John 16, 5. And this is Jesus speaking. And he says, but now I'm going away to the one who sent me. And not one of you is asking where I'm going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Because if I don't, if I don't go away, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. My father will send him to you. And, he, and when he comes, he will convict the world of its sins and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to my Father and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it right now. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. Aren't you thankful for that? He will not just speak for His own, on His own, but He will tell you what He has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatsoever He receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I say the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. This was Jesus speaking. So Jesus speaks and the Holy Spirit brings it to you. That's a simple, isn't it simple? But there's, there's things you need to ask yourself if I'm being led by the Holy Spirit because I believe, you know, we had some people come and get saved, receive salvation, but it's more to it than that. You've got to be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen? And I, I believe that. As many are led by the Holy Spirit, they are the sons of God, right? By they're led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And so we need to be led. And the first thing that I see that you are when you are led by the Holy Spirit, okay, you want to, you want to self examine yourself, is you'll have peace. Peace. Because I bring I believe the Holy Spirit, He brings peace to you. Doesn't he? I believe that with all my heart. I believe the Holy Spirit, He brings peace. You can be in the middle of a storm and you'll have peace. You don't know how to explain it? 
You don't know how to explain it, but you'll have peace. Amen? Uh, the, Eng the, the, the King James has that English word. He says, my father will send the comforter. The comforter. But that, that, that word comforter on its own isn't good enough to explain who the Holy Spirit is. And, and the NLT says that uh, he'll send the advocate, but that's not good enough. It's not good enough that he's just, it's just a, our English word, the comforter, the advocate. It goes way beyond that. So you, when you look up the, the comforter in the Greek, it means he's our intercessor. He makes intercession for us. Amen? He's our counselor. He's our advocate. He's our helper. He's our strengthener. And he's the one who stands by you. And so what that means to me, I like the King James word comforter. I like that. Because I know when I have peace, I've been comforted. Do you understand? So a great sign that if you're being led by the Holy Spirit, if you're not being led by the Holy Spirit, you won't have any peace. You know, Christians can have no peace. You know what I mean? Because they're not led by the Holy Spirit. Some of them are. I believe that. Amen? I literally will have peace in my life when I'm led by the Holy Spirit. Amen? I love that. A person who accepts, uh, who has not accepted Jesus as their Savior, there is no peace. Have you, met, have you ran into somebody like that that has no peace? It's pretty much everywhere. You just walk out these doors and start talking to people, and you'll find people with no peace. That's one of the things that's going to be so great about heaven. When we get there, there's going to be perfect peace because you'll be with your Savior. Isn't that wonderful? I believe that. He leads us in paths of peace. The Holy Spirit brings peace to our lives. In verse 8 it says this, And when he comes, he will convict the world. The second part is, the second thing I saw is not only you'll have peace, but he's going to convict you. He's going to convict you. Okay? Some people think, well, that's just for the sinner. No, that's for the Christian too. You understand? Conviction is for the sinner, and it's for the Christian as well. Amen? I like Noah Webster's 1828 dictionary. It says this about convict. It says, to convince of sin, to prove or determine to be guilty. And then it says, to prove or to show to be false. To show by proof or evidence. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He proves to you. He, he convicts you. He convicts you. See, in order to re receive salvation, you've got to have conviction. There has to be a drawing of the Holy Spirit. In order for someone to get saved, there has to be drawing. No one comes to the Father unless he's drawn by the Holy Spirit. You're going to be convicted by the Holy Spirit. But it doesn't stop there. If you're a child of God, the Holy Spirit is going to convict you. You're going to grow. You're going to grow in the Lord. I believe that with everything that's in me. I, I have grown in my walk. The Lord has convicted. The Holy Spirit has convicted me in my life. I don't walk the same way I did 15 years ago. I don't walk the same as I did two years ago. Okay? And that's the way it should be. I don't care how deep you are in the Lord. And if you're under the sound of my voice, that you should have somewhere in your life that the Holy Spirit is convicting you and, and working on you. I believe that, don't you? It's a continual grow. The kingdom of God is either growing or dying. You can't show me anywhere in the, in the, in the scriptures where it's a stagnant salvation. You're growing or you're dying. And you grow through conviction. How many has ever been convicted? Yes. See? So this is one way that you know if you're being led by the Holy Spirit. He'll convict you. He'll do it gently. The Holy Spirit does it gently. And, and there's a difference between being convicted and being c condemned, condemnation. See, the, the devil works through condemnation. He makes you feel guilty. He makes you feel ashamed. He makes you feel just terrible about yourself. The Holy Spirit doesn't do that. He don't do that. He just, he just gently comes to you, and he presents the truth, and then he backs up and sees what you're going to do with it. He really does. This is how it works in my life. I don't know. You may be different, but he does. When I've done something that grieves the Holy Spirit, I'll feel it. And he'll, he'll just bring me the truth, and then he'll back up, and he'll wait for me to change. 
condemnation from Satan, from Satan, he comes and he just rides you. Oh, you, you did it. You did, you did terrible there. You did terrible. I can't believe it. You're not worthy for forgiveness. You know, it just keeps riding and keeps riding. But conviction is different. And it's okay to be convicted. But you've got you to gotta, you gotta yield to that conviction as you grow. Amen? You'll grow to it. You'll, you'll change. The Holy Spirit won't twist your arm and make you holler uncle. He won't do it. He just comes. Amen? There's a difference. I know the difference. How I many of you ever experienced the difference? If you've ever sat under preaching that will, that will bring condemnation on you, you'll know the difference. Amen? <laughs> there is therefore no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen? Your sins are paid for, but the Holy Spirit doesn't want you to be a spoiled brat. You may be a king's kid, but he don't want you to be a spoiled king's kid. He don't want you to he don't want to leave you in one place. He wants to take you to a next level, another level. Amen. And you'll never go to another level in Christ unless you understand when he convicts you, I you don't you shouldn't do that anymore. You shouldn't do this. When you yield to that and you don't do it, then you'll go to the next level. Amen. That's what I love about the Holy Spirit. You gotta have a teachable heart. Amen. And what I also love about the Holy Spirit is he just don't he just don't say you shouldn't do that. He will say he will come. This is how he does for me. Now I can't t say it for you, but this is how he does for me. He'll come to me and he'll deal with my heart, and he'll say you shouldn't do this. And then he'll step back and he'll he'll start showing me pieces why you shouldn't do this. If I'm looking, if I'm really looking, he'll not only show me not to do it, but he'll explain to me why I shouldn't do it. And see, this is a lesson to us as parents. We need to teach our kids this way. Just like the Holy Spirit teaches us. Just don't, it's not good enough to say no. But you need to tell them why that it says no. If you do this and this, there's heartache coming in your life. And that's the way the Holy Spirit does. He does. Amen? Okay. See, the church has gotten away from convictions. We've gotten away from convictions. We have. Remember they used to preach a lot about convictions? Do you remember that? No, only nobody remembers that. One remembers it. All right, convictions. Convictions come from the Holy Spirit. It doesn't come from me. I can't push my convictions off on you. But you need to be convicted by something. The Holy Spirit will convict you. I promise you that. Amen? We've gotten away. See, the church has gotten away from convictions, but it's also gotten away from being led by the Holy Spirit. Because if you're led by the Holy Spirit, you will be convicted. It's just, it's just they're tied together. There's no separating. And, and to, in today's world, and, and the mega churches we have, is confronted by the world standards. The world standard is there's, you've got to have a safe zone. You know what I mean? You've got to be safe. There's no absolute truth. It may be okay. Just go ahead and do whatever, you know. And, and that's why we have, that's why we have the, the agenda in the Methodist church that they're going to they're ordain homosexuals. It's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. They won't line up with the Word of God. You've got to, there's an absolute called the Word of God. There's an absolute called the Word of God. I can't help it. And they have this, they have a thing that says if it feels good, do it. It's not only just in the world, but it's in the church as well. You deserve it. No, the Holy Spirit will convict you. If it's wrong, he'll convict you. Now, if you grieve the Holy Spirit and you push him off and push him off and push him off, eventually he'll quit dealing with you. I believe that. And someone who preaches the truth, it'll sound like hate to the world. It'll sound like hate. It will. But it's the Holy Spirit. It's a conviction. It's not me. It's the Holy Spirit. I can just present the word. It's all I can do. The world says, well, you're not progressive enough. The world will say that. You're not progressive enough. You know, and I thought about that. Anybody with convictions is old-fashioned. Well, you know what? <laughs> the word of God is not progressive. The word of God is set in standard. It's set in stone. It does not change. 
you know, the, the definition of progressive is that it's fully developing. The Word of God is already developed. It's, it's rock solid. So when you say the Word, when your church, you're not progressive enough, that's, I'm sorry, when you space your church on the Word of God, there's nothing else to be said. Amen? It's true. It's true. The Word of God is, is perfect. It's unmovable, unshakable, unstoppable. It's established forever. Not progressive. It's done, it's done developed as far as it's going to develop. You know what I mean? That's pretty good when you start thinking about that, isn't it? I don't want to be progressive. <laughs> I want to be established in the Word of God. That's the way I feel. The Word of God still convicts people of sin. The Holy Spirit still convicts people of sin. He does. He still reaches down and convicts them. And all the promises in the Word of God are still true. Amen? You can't you just pick and choose what you're going to believe. If you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit, you'll be convicted. That's number two. You'll have peace, but you'll have conviction. Okay? So I'm asking, when's the last time you've had something con the Holy Spirit come and convict your heart? I was convicted this week of something. <laughs> That's just the way it is. And, and, and I, I will, you know, I've got to lay it down. I need, to, I need to organize more. He keeps coming to me. You need, Tim, you've got to get more organized. I mean, that's, I know that's something silly and something simple, but it's true. If I'm going to be effective for the kingdom of God, you've got to get more organized, Tim. And he does things like that. He shows me areas in my life that I need to change. See, he leads you into all truth. Some people think that it's just like, well, he's just going to show you some great spiritual wisdom. No, it's all truth. Any truth. That's why I tell Kat when she was taking a test. I said, and she said, boy, it's really hard. I said, did you ask the Holy Spirit? No. Well, the Holy Spirit knows all about physics. He created a body. He knows. He can help you. He can help you. Amen? I believe that, don't you? I mean, it's your job to study. Put it in. But he brings all things back to remembrance. That's what the Word of God says. I stand upon it. You know, let's go to verse 12. It says, there's so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. Could you imagine Paul saying that? <laughs> or no, it's not Paul. It's John. Jesus said it. Jesus said it. There's so much more I want to tell you. Jesus said that. There's so much more I want to tell you, but you can't handle it. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. Amen? He will not speak on his own. See, the Holy Spirit convicted me of just my message on Sunday. He said, you try to get too complicated sometimes. You just need to keep it simple. Keep it simple, stupid. He didn't say that. Keep it simple, sweetie, is what he said. <laughs> keep it simple, sweetie. Because that's the Holy Spirit. But number three, you'll have peace. He'll convict you. I'm telling you, if you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit, you'll have these signs that will follow you. You'll have peace. He'll convict you. Number three, he only will present the truth. He will make you walk in truth. In truth. See, the Holy Spirit relays a message from the throne room of God. The throne room of God. That's amazing, isn't it, when you start thinking about that. He speaks to me from the throne room. He will. And he's, the Holy Spirit has two other names. You know what they are? Truth and a guide. He's a truth and he's guide. He's truth and he's guide. Amen? So every time you pick up the word of God, pick up, everybody's got a Bible, pick it up for a minute. Or you got your own your phone, just pick it up. There you go. So every time do you pick it up, do you do you do you acknowledge the guide? Do you acknowledge the guide? Because every time you read the word of God, you should acknowledge the guide. Don't you believe that? I believe that. Because if you ask the guide, he knows all about it. He can lead you and guide you into everything that you need to know. <laughs> See, how do I know I'm being led by the guide? Is what I'm doing lining up with the Word of God. It comes back around to that. If you want to understand the Bible, ask the guide. 
you want to understand, understand the Bible, I believe that. Your actions and your behavior lining up with the, with the truth of God's Word, it'll do it. If it's not lining up, if your actions do not line up with the Word of God, you're not being led by the Holy Spirit. That's a bummer, isn't it? But it's true. It's true. Some people rejoice and some people get mad. And so I, I put, I like, you need, we need real life application, right? Real life application. So number one, here we go. When you obsess over things you can't afford, you're not being led by the Holy Spirit. This is true, isn't it? Huh? Can I get an amen? Because when you obsess about something you can't afford, that just leads you into bondage. That's real life right there. The Holy Spirit's never going to tell you to go out and buy a house you can't afford. The Holy Spirit's never going to tell you to go out and buy a car you can't afford. It's real life there. Okay? Now, I'm not, I, know, I know the verse that says, My God can supply all my, you know, all my needs according to His riches and glory. But there, that says needs, not wants. There is a lot of wants that this flesh don't need. Did you get that? This is true. And I also know I want to bring a balance to this. You know what the balance is? If I'm faithful in the little things, if I'm faithful in the little things, he will add to me other things. Okay? Isn't that good? Start thinking about that. Somebody say, if. If I. If I. See, you can put... You can put emphasis on each word of this verse. If, if I, what? Am, right? If I am faithful, if I am faithful, right? See, you, you put emphasis on it, and it'll mean a whole lot more. I know that's silly, and that sounds silly, doesn't it? And I'm bringing it right down to where it's very simple, right? Okay. Number two, here's another one to know if you're, if you're following. When you're spending more time analyzing somebody else's behavior than yours. Oh, this is one for the church world. They need, we need to hear this. When you spend more time analyzing somebody else's behavior than yours, you're not being led by the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will convict you. He will lead you. Well, brother so-and-so is doing this. No, he will lead you. You understand? He will give you a word of knowledge sometimes to tell somebody. But more than likely, he's just going to tell you. He's going to lead you. Amen? You need to tend your own garden. Right? Yeah, because you're going to give an account for the fruit that you raise and not the fruit somebody else's does. When you spend more time analyzing somebody else's behavior than you do yours. Because the Holy Spirit, he'll deal with you. Me. Me. Amen? I'm just doing, I, I, get, I need to move quicker, don't I? Number three. <laughs> when you get super offended when a godly person corrects you and speaks to you in love. In truth. Amen? You're not being led by the Holy Spirit. Here's another one. When you don't speak the truth. When you don't speak the truth. Or you feel a need to alter the truth. You're not being led by the Holy Spirit. When you store up offenses. Store them up. See this, this, it's, a, it's a big problem in a church body a lot of times. It really is. The world has no true peace. It doesn't. When you're led by the Spirit of God, you'll have peace. You believe that? I believe that. Amen. It's one thing I've learned in the short time I've pastored is you'll only go as far as you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. You'll only go as far as you let the Holy Spirit lead you. I've seen people get saved, and I've seen people... Uh, start growing, start growing. It's kind of neat to watch them. It's really cool. But then I've watched the Holy Spirit deal with them on something. Not me. The Holy Spirit would deal with them. He'll convict them. He'll show them something in the Word of God. I watch them wrestle with it, 
And when they don't yield to it, it stunts the growth. They start going backwards. Because the kingdom of God is either a growing or you're dying. Growing or dying. There's no staying still. And so when you reject the Holy Spirit and his teaching, you start dying. And I, you can watch them. You can watch them. Amen? So I believe that. There's a lot of, lot of people are not even looking for the truth. You believe that? And I believe that some are looking for the truth, but they forget the guide. You can't do that because the guide will lead you into all truth. They're inseparable. So the next time you pick up the Word of God, always acknowledge the guide. Always acknowledge the guide. And then the really weird ones, <laughs> they just want the guide with no truth. <laughs> it's true. They want the guide, but they don't get established in the truth. Have you seen that? Okay, sorry. I just threw that one in there. <laughs> but the greatest thing that you can do, the greatest for your spiritual growth, and you need to ask yourself, am I being led by the Holy Spirit? Am I being led? For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And that was, that was just some real easy points to follow and to ask yourself if I'm being led. Amen? When's the last time? Do you have peace in your life? Is there peace? Because the Holy Spirit, He will. He'll bring peace that passes all understanding. When's the last time you've been convicted of something? And I'm not saying you're a bad person. I'm not. I was convicted. I was convicted this week of something. You know what I mean? So I'm just saying that, that as you grow, the only way you'll grow is if you are challenged. And the Holy Spirit will challenge you to grow. Amen? And then is your, is your life lining up with the Word of God, the truth of the Word of God? Always the truth. Amen. Well, if you're here tonight and you want, you want more of, to be led by the Holy Spirit, I'm just going to open the altars up. If you don't know Christ... I mean, last Wednesday or two Wednesdays ago, I didn't I didn't give an altar call, and a young man stopped me after church and said, "I need to give my heart to the Lord." And so I never want to do that. I've learned my mistake. The Holy Spirit convicted me then and said, "You need to always add an altar call. Always give the opportunity for someone to receive Christ." So if you don't know Christ, you've never made Jesus your Lord and Savior, and you want to do that, this altar's open. And then the, the second part of the altar call is is if you're here and you know that you need to yield more to the Holy Spirit as He speaks. This altar is open. See, the altar is a, is a great place. It's where we grow. It's where we start, and it's where we grow. When we give it to God. God can't do anything with something you won't give him. You have to give it to him. I'm just going to pray with these ones, and uh, if you want to come, you're welcome to come.